Atlantis Houston, good morning. Good morning, Houston. Got you loud and clear, Steve. Loud and clear, thanks for the wake up. You bet, thank the uh, marching Illini. This is Mission Control Houston. We're receiving live television from the flight deck of Atlantis now, showing uh, Mission Specialist Jay Apt in his uh, launch and entry helmet and helmet retention assembly, pre-breathing pure oxygen, and uh, also working through the procedures for the in-bay health checkup of the Gamma Ray Observatory, now underway. And Atlantis, we're with you in the mid-deck now. Okay. And in this uh, television view shows Mission Specialist Jerry Ross uh, also going through a pre-breathe of pure oxygen uh, to purge nitrogen from his bloodstream on the mid-deck. Uh, in the airlock, checking out the spacesuits that will be used on the fourth day of the flight and that will be at the ready tomorrow during the deploy of the Gamma Ray Observatory should an EVA be needed. Atlantis, we're back on the flight deck. Gotcha. Since uh, the pressure in a spacesuit uh, during a spacewalk is at 4.3 pounds per square inch and uh, the atmosphere in a spacesuit is pure oxygen, uh, all these steps are necessary to purge nitrogen from the bloodstream and avoid uh, what's commonly called the bends. Are you on the flight deck uh, with the TV? Say again, Steve. Are you on the flight deck with us on TV? Watching you talk. See, you can show Jeff I never go without this. He's proud of you.
This is Mission Control Houston. We're now receiving live television from a payload bay, payload bay camera on board Atlantis. And we're standing by as uh, shuttle amateur radio experiment operations are planned to begin momentarily, uh, featuring Clear Creek Independent School Districts uh, from the Johnson Space Center local area, uh, communicating with the crew on board Atlantis. I would just point out that SARX uh, is an acronym for Shuttle Amateur Radio Experiment. That's uh, truly what this is. KB-5, AWP, this is N6MNN calling. 22 degrees above your horizon. It appears that we should have acquisition here uh, momentarily in Corpus as well. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, Ralph. KB-5AWP, this is N6MN, uh, I'm copying you uh, very well now, go ahead. Okay, Ralph, good signal, I hear your voice much better now. We must be just coming into view over your horizon, and uh, we're ready to uh, talk to the uh, students at Clear Creek Independent School District. Okay, uh, I'm ready to copy, anytime you're ready to transmit. Okay, uh, let's go right to the group. Uh, good morning, this is uh, KB-5. Preparations are you making today? Over. Uh, did you copy that? Okay, Ken. Over. Over. The question is, what kind of preparations are being made for the EVA tomorrow, uh, and for the Gamma Ray Observatory uh, deployment? Uh, over. Okay, you're just coming in better at the end. Say the question again fast, please. Okay, the question is, what uh, preparations are you making for the deployment of the Gamma Ray Observatory, Ken? Over. Okay, uh, it seems like we're having a little bit of a problem here at the moment. Seems the link is dropping uh, in and out a little bit. Uh, Ralph, put me back on the uh, patch again. Uh, KB-5 AWP, this is SARX Control. Do you copy now, Ken? Over. I just kept you at the end. Say again, please. Short sentence. Yes. What uh, preparations are you making for the deployment of the uh, uh, Gamma Ray Observatory? Over. Okay, right now we just finished a uh, teacher's direct check and a uh, reaction wheel test. Everything is going very well with Gamma Ray Observatory, and uh, we look uh, very good for tomorrow. Over. Okay, uh, uh, W5 Triple R, go ahead with your next question, please. Over. Going to, uh, we are just about ready for our second question. Now stand by. Please. Please, Space Center. Go ahead when you're ready, uh, Chuck. Do you tend to reevaluate your life when you look at the Earth? Over. Over, over. I think what I heard was you tend to reevaluate your life when you uh, look at the Earth. Is that correct? That's, uh, that's correct, Ken. Go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, we all do. That's, in fact, uh, we're very thankful for what we've been able to accomplish and what so many people have helped us to be able to do. And uh, when you float up here above uh, the Earth in our little spacecraft and look down at the great big spacecraft that we all fly on, it makes us all think about uh, what our priorities are. Over. Okay, very good, Ken. Uh, uh, w 5 triple R Building 2, ask your uh, next question, please. Over. Your team could set just one goal that had to justify the continuation of the entire STS program. What would that one goal be? Over. Um, big question. Uh, I guess if we had to boil down the mission uh, to one goal, that goal would be to uh, take steps to continue to explore our universe. We're going to do that by deploying Gamma Ray Observatory, which will look outward to uh, things that help create and shape the beginning of our universe, and we'll do it with 
with experiments in the mid deck that look inward to the uh, building blocks of life where we try and grow crystals from protein that will allow scientists to uh, examine the molecular structure of those building blocks and help us build better medicine. In between, we're going to explore uh, data that we'll need to build a space station. Uh, we'll be able to communicate with you and with many other people in the hopes that uh, we can communicate and then cooperate and all fly together better on our spaceship. Over. Okay, okay, Ken, very good. Uh, W5RRR, ask your next question now, please. Over. Why is the Gamma Ray Observatory being, being put out into space and how will it help our planet? Over. The question was, Ken, why is the Gamma Ray Observatory being deployed? Uh, over. And how will it help? Over. And I could not copy the question. Please restate it. Uh, the the uh, question was a little bit hard to pick up. How will the Gamma Ray Observatory help, help, I mean, being put out into space, and how will it help our planet? Uh, uh, what I thought I copied was whether our orbit was going to be anywhere near where the space station would be. Is that correct? No, negative, negative. Let's go to Corpus. Uh, let's go to Corpus at this time. Uh, uh, Bob, let's pick it up then. Let's go to, to Atlantis to your station. And the question is, uh, why are we deploying the GRO, Ken, and what will it help us with? Over. Uh, this is Corpus 50. Uh, repeat the question, uh, K5WR. Okay, the question is, why are we deploying GRO? Okay, the antenna creates a little bit better. Uh, sometimes you have to make little adjustments. Go ahead with the question I had on uh, Corpus Christi Gangbusters. Okay, go ahead. Okay, the question is, why are we deploying GRO, and how will it help us here on Earth? Over, over. Okay, Doug, we have to deploy GRO up here in orbit because the sensors that enable us to see and detect gamma rays yeah. will not work on Earth because the gamma rays will not be visible through the atmosphere and through the Earth's, uh, through the Earth's, sorry, I broke clock there. We can't see the signals on Earth, so we have to put our sensors, our, our window, up in orbit. And if by studying the universe, we'll help to learn a lot more about the formation of our planet itself and where we may be going. Okay, okay Ken, very good. Uh, next question from W5RRR. Go ahead. Who or what inspired you to be an astronaut? A, a lot of people had a lot to do with it, including my parents and, uh, and family. Uh, when I was a student in, in school, we were able to watch the astronauts on television. Uh, and I think seeing the early astronauts on TV helped inspire me. Uh, in particular, John Glenn was uh, one that I, I followed his mission very closely and uh, was, in, I think, got a lot of inspiration. I would hope that uh, we can continue that mission and perhaps inspire future astronauts. Okay, Ken, very good. Uh, can I have the next question from W5RRR? Over. Do you understand this is Commander Steve Nagel's third flight? He has flown all three positions, mission specialist, commander, and pilot. How is the training for this flight different from all of his other flights? Over. Rover? Rover? Okay. That sounds like a question for Steve. I'd like to get him over here since uh, he's got his license and he can work the radio uh, just as easily as I can. Stand by, please. Well, of course, this is a good, good call in contact. Yes, hello, Steve. Uh, copy you fine. Go ahead. Roger, I'm ready to answer any questions you might have. Just passed by Houston, and we're uh, coming down the, the, coast, the Gulf Coast right now. Okay, Steve, very good. The question is... Uh, in the light of the fact that you've flown all three positions, uh, mission specialist, pilot, and commander, how was the training for this flight different from your previous flights? Over, over. Well, actually, uh, the training for this flight was quite similar to my last one. I got the same uh, type of pilot training for uh, flying the shuttle. Uh, however, the commander has overall responsibility for the mission, the administrative responsibility we don't have. But I might say the group I worked with made that pretty easy. Okay, Steve, 
very good. Uh, W5 Triple R, ask your next question, please. Over. How are your emotions different in space? Okay, the question is, uh, how are your emotions different in space, Steve? Over, over. Was that a uh, question about my emotions? It, yes, over. That's one. Well, I guess I'd have to say that, uh, like Ken was saying earlier, it gives one pause to reflect on uh, who you are and where you are. It makes you feel awfully small uh, to be up here and also uh, make you appreciate the efforts of the people who got up here so literally in the cell. Okay, Steve, very good. We're going to need to switch to our tracking station in Fort Myers, Florida. Uh, uh, let's make that transition now. Uh, John, uh, can you, uh, uh, can you uh, transmit uh, to, uh, to the shuttle for us, please? Over. Uh, Roger. Uh, uh, Candy, or KB5AWP, uh, W4RDI, are you reading me all right now? Okay, fine. Let's go ahead, uh, Doug. Uh, okay, uh, Don. Uh, w five triple R. Ask your next question, please. Over. Um, will this orbit you take be anywhere near where the space station will be? Over. Okay. The question is, will your orbit take you anywhere near where the space station will be? Over. Over. I uh, say again, Doug. Yeah, N5 RAW, uh, this is Orange Control. The question is, will the orbit you're in take you anywhere near where the space station will be, Steve? Over, over. Roger, we had a, uh, a close passing here uh, yesterday. Captain Punch, I'm not sure how close we were uh, tied to the cabin's contact. Steve, 
very, very good. Steve, we're about to go LOS from our ground station down in Fort Myers. Thanks to you and the entire crew for uh, working with us on this uh, path. Worked out very, very well, I believe. Um, just a, a further a footnote, uh, I think that all the uh, astronauts would agree that uh, getting involved in amateur radio is probably another good way to uh, to uh, take your first step uh, into technical uh, pursuits as well. Well, this has been session one of the Star X STS-37 uh, mission. Uh, Chuck, let's go back to you at uh, W5RRR and uh, get any comments from your participants. Uh, you got a bunch of excited people over there. Chuck, go ahead. Radio, radio, radio on building two. We have. We've got a lot of news interest and a lot of excited kids. I think uh, a lot of them got to answer, ask questions, and that's what we were hoping for. Over. Okay, okay, Chuck. Very, very good. Well, I think it worked out very, very well. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, a number of people uh, that will be working with us through the, the rest of the day uh, with our school contacts. First and foremost, the uh, their own connection. Uh, up in Chicago is providing the uh, Telebridge capability. Uh, Diane Justin, uh, Brian uh, Risty, and Jim Nelson in particular. Uh, and Mark and Dave and a bunch of guys up there at Jerome who've done an outstanding job uh, 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 for us. Uh, of course, we want to thank the crew for their time. Uh, all of the uh, folks here at the Johnson Space Center and uh, my colleague Bill Tynan and just uh, a, a large number of people that have helped to uh, Roy Neal, Pete O'Dell, and uh, just a whole group of people that have, uh, have worked extra hard to make this uh, mission a success. Uh, Lou McFadden, uh, W5DID with the hardware, and anytime you get into naming and names, you're always afraid you're going to leave somebody out. John Nickel and Karen Nickel uh, helping us with the bridge. Chuck Biggs over at the auditorium here at W5 Triple R. Uh, and you'll be hearing uh, from more about those people as the uh, mission uh, progresses. Our next uh, uh, school session will be session number two. It will take place at uh, roughly 1051 Central Time, or I should say 1651 UTC today. And we'll have uh, two school groups at that time who will uh, get to ask questions much as uh, we're asked here during this session. We want to thank everyone for joining us, and we'll look forward to seeing you during uh, session two. This is Doug Locke, Miller at SARS Control, bidding everyone a good morning in 73. Okay, and we're getting started on the show off. We've still got a little ways to go on the setup, but uh, before we uh, book it on, this is our simplified version of a heat pipe, which we're carrying on board. And a uh, heat pipe is just a simple uh, mechanism that uses the moving parts to get rid of heat from a heat source uh, and take it out to a radiator using a fluid vapor system. And we're using a 50% mixture of ethanol and water, and... Uh, in place of a heat source, we're going to be using uh, force transfer syringes for air and fluid today. But what we hope to show is that uh, this particular design um, still allows uh, capillary action and uh, wetting up here in zero G. Okay, I don't know how good a picture it looks. We've uh, done, we're just starting it. We've done, uh, took us a slightly over two total cycles of the plunger to get up to the yellow mark. Uh, the fluid is migrating very slowly into the liquid channel. Okay, we have a good picture. Atlanta, Houston, for Linda, we'd like for you to tap it on the end a few more times. Okay. Tapping is coming. Okay, it's moving. Oh, 
we can see that. And it really seemed like initially uh, that big bubble broke up, maybe that did it, but we still got a lot of bubbles left. I'll see if I can illuminate the lower part of the picture. The one down shining in the light through now, uh, after that rather light tapping, we've seen a lot of small bubbles that have seemed to have reformed into a large one uh, after the priming was complete. Okay, Linda, we can see that. Thanks. Okay, I'll start over. Install the male vent QD into port EV. Install 3cc bubble injection syringe into port CL, withdraw three cc's from port CL, and observe priming in the liquid channel, and then tell us what you see, and also we'd be happy for downlink if you want to give it to us. Okay, KT, we're going to withdraw three cc's now. And we're watching. KT, I'd say that there was uh, no noticeable reaction. Okay, Jerry, we saw the thing. Jerry, we have another question for you. We couldn't quite tell. Did you get liquid in the syringe when you withdrew the three cc's, or was it all air? All air. Copy that. Second input. Third input. Mark fourth input, and we're seeing absolutely no motion with the TV cameras. Yeah, we're watching that down here. First input in. 